Happy New Year and welcome back to our devotions from Church of the Palms that will reach you on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We are delighted that you have joined us. Our scripture passage for today comes from the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 18. This is also known as the prologue. It is such a beautiful piece of scripture. Each year, Pastor Steve recites from memory the first few verses before we begin lighting the candles in our Christmas Eve service. Hear now the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's own son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son, himself God, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Jesus, light of the world, shine your light upon us as we reflect upon the word just read and upon you, the word made flesh. Amen. I love the beginning of John's Gospel. This may not always have been true. In my younger years, I was drawn to Mark's gospel. It is short, quick, and to the point. Mark's favorite word is immediately, and he clips right through the stories and the miracles of Jesus. Action-packed, essential facts, efficient. As I have intentionally tried to slow down a bit in life and to practice being present in each of life's moments, I have begun to enjoy more leisurely descriptive writing, like the poetic words that John uses in his gospel. Poetry cannot be skimmed or read quickly. You are invited to savor the words, to ponder them in your heart, and to wonder what they might be saying to you. John lays the foundation of the theme in this fourth gospel with the words light and life. Jesus, who is referred to as the Word, comes into the world, yet has always been with God from the very beginning. John's Gospel opens and closes with life. At the very beginning, we read that Jesus was life. And toward the very end, in chapter 20, verse 31, John tells us the purpose of this book. These things are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, through believing, you may have life in his name. This echoes the words in John 10.10, 10, where Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. I can imagine that John is talking about both the eternal life and the good life we are invited to participate in while we are on earth. Just think of all the people in your circles who have a relationship with God, 
and those who don't. I often notice glimpses of joy, hope, and peace emanating from the person who knows Jesus. They aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but the abundant life is expressed in acts of forgiveness, kindness, and unselfishness that cares for others. The second key word John uses is light. Jesus is the light of all people, not just some people, but all people. I love the image of the words in verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, John doesn't name what the actual darkness is, but I think we all have stories of our particular darkness. We've all felt it, lived in it, and passed through dark valleys. John reminds us that all the darkness in the world cannot extinguish even the littlest flame. And isn't it true that we yearn for the light most of all when we are in the darkness? A yearning that will only be satisfied by the one who is the light of the world. I'd like to share a poem with you by Steve Garnis Holmes called Word Made Flesh. The mystery of the incarnation is not merely a baby born once upon a time but that it is the nature of God's word to become real in our world. The word isn't a thing hanging by itself out in space, but a word to us, with us, a conversation, a presence living with us in the flesh. All flesh is God's word made flesh. We love all people because they are all bits of God. We have hope in hard times because everything has God in it. The word isn't an idea that you can understand. It is a presence you can trust. Like shepherds stumbling to the manger, we are always coming to meet God, always standing before the holy always silenced in the presence of the love that encompasses us, that holds us in real arms of flesh that are the whole world. Alleluia. Friends, God did not stay distant from us, remote and isolated. Rather, God chose to live with humanity in the midst of human weakness, confusion, and pain bringing light and life. Like John the Baptist, we are called to not only tell about the light, but also to reflect the light of Christ through our gentle words, kind actions, and warm presence. In doing so, I believe we will begin to experience the abundant life intended for each one of us. Amen.